So Talbot, we're going to start and we're going to talk about gift cards? Really? Uh, I think we'll talk about a little more than gift cards. Good, but okay. We'll spend a little time on gift so cards. So most people who hear about payments think payments are about processing the movement of money. And you're saying it's about much more than the movement of money. Yeah, yeah. Tell me. So I think it's much more than that. There's 10,500 people here at the fifth annual Money 2020 as evidence of that, that payments are moving up the value stream and becoming an engagement platform. So in other words, when I pay for something, I can actually become more engaged in the process? Is that what yeah, you're well, it's even more than that. So it goes beyond the transfer of funds. It goes beyond the settlement of funds. That's all really sexy stuff to us in payments. Right. But what the consumer cares about is I'm more deeply connecting them with a brand. And we do that through something we like to talk about as branded value solutions. Not just a gift card, but a whole set of solutions that more deeply connects the consumer with the brand. So when I'm making a payment, at the same time, I can connect to other brands, is what you're saying. You can use the power of other brands to build equity with your own consumer experience. Mm -hmm. So businesses today are trying to rise above the din. There's so much activity and stimulus for consumers today, particularly as connected consumers. Um, there's $185 billion being spent on marketing and advertising today in the U.S. alone. But it's not breaking through. So one of the ways you can break through is leverage brands that already have equity with the consumer. So there are hundreds of giant global brands out there, and you're saying, and Blackhawk and others, you're saying, look, I can take these brands that I normally wouldn't have a relationship with, I can pull them into my business, and I can grow my own business using somebody else's brand. That's right. So let me give you a real concrete example. So if you use a credit card today, you accumulate points. Those points can get converted into an e-gift for one of the top three brands that the U.S. millennials love, which is Nike, uh, right now Sony, and Apple. Right. And they can convert it immediately into that value and use it to purchase. So I've done two things. I've leveraged the brand equity of those very popular brands, and I've made that a more seamless transaction. So a consumer doesn't have to wait for their reward to come in the mail. They can use it immediately to pay for something in the store. So in the past, when people think about gift cards, they think about these physical cards in the supermarket for Christmas or something. I know that at my, my startup, we've actually incorporated these ideas of immediate rewards to people in ways that people want because the fact of the matter is so many people look at points and go you know I don't need any more points thank you right, so much right. what I really need is some immediate benefit for myself right what what's in it for me yeah so at the end of the day what you're saying is a platform can be now created that allows hundreds of brands to go to work for any company including a startup yeah and actually that's why I wanted you up here as a customer of Blackhawk, I but knew it. <laughs> also to talk about your company and your idea with Upside, because it's a perfect example of how people are using branded solutions. Well, in our case, what we basically said is, look, there's hundreds of billions of dollars of unmanaged business travel where the person spending the money is not the person who's essentially paying for the business trip. So at Upside, we've said, look, we'll show you simple ways to save money on your business trip, and some of those savings will immediately go to you in the form of free gift cards that you can spend at any one of you know, Blackhawk's customers, or some of them will go to your employer. So we're building, if you will, an incentive system right into the travel selection system. Right, right. But that'll work for almost any company that's looking out in the marketplace and saying, how do I incent people to behave differently? Yeah, and, and it's really interesting because what you're using to incent that customer or align the interest of the employer and employee in that regard is you're using a form of payment dressed up as a brand. Right. And so that's what makes it so perfect for the connected consumer. You know, millennials are now using four mobile devices or four different connected devices in any average day, including wearables. And being able to, they, they expect immediate gratification. So being able to turn that into a transaction where they feel rewarded on the spot is much more meaningful than delayed gratification. You know, it reminds me back when originally there was charge cards, right? And all you could do was, 
you know, pay your bill using a charge card, and somebody said, you know what, we can ride these rails and we can lend and revolve. Yep. What you're saying is now the next generation here is instead of revolving, which you're going to do anyway on some of these cases, you can actually add a motivation incentive layer, and you don't have to invent all these brands. You can borrow the brand equity from all of these other brands and with one agreement get them all working for your company. Yeah, you can. I think what you can also do in the digital world that we're all living in now is more seamlessly exchange value. So the idea that I take loyalty points, as you said before, people have points, they're sitting on it. It's estimated $50 billion worth of points in North America. How do I make that actionable? And then if I use a branded value solution, I'm also going to create traffic to that end destination. A more engaged consumer is proven to spend 90% more with that brand. You know, we saw in our, in our startup, too, at Upside, when we surveyed people about giving them cash, many of them said, well, look, if you give me cash, my employer is going to want to take that money. After all, I'm buying a business trip. If, on the other hand, you give me $75 in Amazon or $100 or $200 in Amazon gift cards, well, that's mine, all right, and my employer will get two to $300 in savings. So in many ways, a, a currency that I can spend at my favorite store can even be preferred to cash. In yeah. my case, it was. Yeah. Well, there's other, there's other benefits, I think. And again, when we, we step back as an industry and look at what's really happening, we're starting to see, I think, payments move out deeper into the ecosystem, right. touch the consumer in more meaningful ways, and get used to drive more connection between a consumer and, uh, and a brand or a business. And a perfect example of that is also employers. You know, employers are increasingly wanting to figure out how do I get more engagement out of my employees? Right. And they're using payment solutions. They're using branded payment solutions to do that. So that's another application. So essentially what you're saying, what I'm hearing is the gift card industry has sort of grown up and exploded in its capacity to solve problems. Instead of it being a Christmas stocking stuffer for hundreds of billions of dollars, it suddenly becomes an alternate currency that where motivation is built into the currency, and yet I can do it on my mobile phone, which means I'm right there if I want to, right. and I can literally pay with my phone and pay with my gift card as if it were currency. It's almost in some ways, um anachronistic to call it a gift card. Because yes, gifting is one usage occasion, uh, but I think there's so many more. And, and thinking more in terms of um, a payment transaction or a payment device or, or currency as a form of engagement with consumers or the end user is, a, I think, a, a more profound and strategic way to think about how we grow our business, particularly in the digital age. So the the world is changing in payments dramatically. I mean, we yep. hear it time and time again at the sessions today. So while the world is changing in payments, do businesses have enough bandwidth to start thinking about the marketing dimension of this? Or are they just struggling just to keep up on all the payment choices they have to deal well, with? Well, I, I think it's, it's an exciting time. I think that uh, businesses, as we've seen in this last year, uh, have had to struggle to keep pace with the change in payments. EMV, the transition to EMV, has been one example of it. Um, the payments ecosystem is incredibly complex, and there's a lot of interdependencies. So I think getting involved in standing up branded payment solutions for the average business, probably not realistic. However, harnessing that power through other solution providers is a more realistic way to do it. But I also see some businesses, an example would be um, Jawbone. So they've actually uh, added payment functionality to their product. So that brings another dimension of connection right. to their product. So they are companies that are reaching out to the payment ecosystem and, and leveraging that to enrich their experience for their own consumers. And I think that's going to happen more and more. Again, it's, it's not about clearing the transaction. It's about giving a more rewarding experience. So consumer finishes their run, which they're tracking with their jawbone wearable. They go into their favorite juice store, and they pay without anything else. I, I think that's the seamless experience we want people to get off payment platforms. So it's really a marketing value add story. story. Yeah. Essentially, we're often so stuck in the payments minutia of how do I clear this, how do I settle this, how do I deal with the fraud, how do I basically make it all work, right. that we're almost exhausted from just dealing with that. <laughs> 
versus at the end of the day, if you look at, for example, the airline industry when frequent flyer programs came through, it became the dominant mechanism for marketing in the airline industry, yeah. no matter, and then ultimately affinity credit cards, et cetera. So I suspect that there are many people here who would benefit from starting to think about how the marketing value add of borrowing brand equity from the outside, why brands? Well, brands really do speak to consumers. And as I said before, um, you know, there's, there's those brands that resonate with millennials, but brands have built-in equity and consumers do uh, trust brands. It's actually interesting, we did some research recently. Um, consumers will trust their favorite store more than their own family. More I found, than their own family? <laughs> yeah, I found that fascinating. Okay. <laughs> um, and I think maybe that's because it's a simpler relationship, uh, the one you have with your favorite store. But I think there is something to the trust and the engagement that brands already have. And so leveraging that makes a lot of sense. Uh, the other thing that we see is when people do care about brands, they're just spending more, they're visiting more, they're willing to recommend it to a friend. And so it's a powerful currency in and of itself. Yeah, and it's also an immediate currency. I think so much of what's happened in the, in the marketing world is we've got all these points and all these other currencies, and the airline world has gone through this terrible sort of crash where, you know, the frequent flyer programs have been so disappointing for mm -hmm. so many people as the airlines have changed the rules on them that ultimately people are saying, all right, what's in it for me? Yeah. You're going to give me something for me right now? Yeah. Okay, right now is good. Right. right. And ultimately, I think that there's going to be some big opportunities as long as they don't have to go build all the rails to all yeah. those up. So how hard is it to, to, for, for me to, to quickly add 50 brands to some program I want to do? Well, it's not hard at all. And I think people leveraging aggregated solutions can do that. And then what's more exciting than even the aggregation is how you weave it into the consumer's experience. So um, can we use geo-targeting? Can we use other offers? And seamlessly couple it with a transaction? So, and then customize it. More and more consumers are saying, I want the value that's relevant to me. Don't just give me the average discount. Don't give me the average coupon. Don't advertise to me in mass. Talk to me about the things that I really care about. So again, that connected consumer, they expect it to be personalized. And I, I'll go back to millennials again, because I think all of us are interested in how we more deeply engage the next generation. Um, and many in, in this audience may actually be the next generation, so I was speaking from a little bit older generation. But millennials are willing to trade, they're like five times more willing to trade personal information for value. That's a really important dynamic because what that says is, I'm willing to give you information if you ensure the value back to me. And give me a choice on what that value is and I'll even give you more information. And so when you look at this device, right, this clearly changes the whole nature of not only how I distribute, but how I redeem. So yeah. does the phone actually make the branded value equation even more valuable because this is so ubiquitous and immediate? Or does it really not make a difference whether or not I have a mobile a solution or not? Oh, no, no, no. I think mobile drives the need for immediacy, right? So because, you're, because you can get information now anytime you want, there's almost an expectation that you should be able to redeem value immediately. Of course, here in the US, we know at physical point of sale, that's still not possible everywhere. With tokenization, that's gonna happen. With NFC, that's gonna happen, it's coming. It, it hasn't come as quickly as I think many of us expect, but that doesn't stop the consumer's expectation that it should be here yesterday. So if I'm creating a new payments platform and I'm in this audience, am I thinking about how I might use some sort of marketing layer on top of my payment system that doesn't require me to set up a whole nightmare of points and other fake things? Is, is that what, we're, what you're sort of saying? Well, well hopefully not fake. Okay. No, <laughs> but most people are saying points, yeah. not yeah. fake in the fraud sense, but yeah. like, oh my yeah. God, another points program. Yeah. I want to kill myself. Yeah. Right. Well, the points programs, it's really interesting. I think the points programs, um, people are accumulating those values and they don't always know how to use it. So we have to give them an easy solution because with that, literally billions of dollars being kind of trapped, trapped in those currencies, I think in the payment ecosystem today, there's lots of ways to, to translate that into action. And giving a consumer an easy way to redeem that in a value-added way that's personalized to them, they're gonna take that all day long. So I think that's an exciting new space. And Degree of difficulty looking out three or four years, is this going to get easier to do as time goes on, or is this going to get more complicated? I think um, the law of entropy exists here. I think there are going to be more use cases. 
Um, payments are going to be standing up solutions in more and different ways and pleasing and more deeply engaging consumers. So, so what I mean by that is I think payments continue to move more to the point of influence, not just the point of purchase. And they continue to be a way for businesses to look at how I deepen that relationship. So I see really, really bright horizon for payments. Do you see it on the acquisition side as much as on the retention loyalty side? I mean, after all, if you offer somebody 50 or or $100 at Amazon or at Nike, I mean, that, that gets me to do something that I might not have even considered doing. Yeah, yeah, it does. There's, there's a lot of research. 93% of consumers, if they receive a card, even if it's for a brand they've never tried, they're going to try it. They're going to use it. So it's kind of interesting. You, you really do influence the behavior there. And that's what we're looking to do. We're looking for payments to be more of an influencer as opposed to, to a settler of transactions. At least that's how we look at it. That's, that's kind of how, um, you know, I like to start with the consumer and work back into the solution. What is it going to help solve it for the, the consumer? How am I going to deliver value for them? How am I going to make their life easier? Either. You know, I, I think it's making it faster, making it worth more to them personally. And then again, it's an exchange of information too. If I have a digital gift card or digital credit and I'm on the phone or whatever, I can share it and break it apart in pieces. Mm -hmm. So do you see a lot of it not just being used by the consumer, but actually the consumer then turning around and giving it to the family members they don't trust because they trust the store so much? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, there is, once it goes digital, there's a lot more flexibility inherent in the platform. So yeah, you can divide up currencies. You can also um, couple them. So aggregation of value. And, and that's really what you see people starting to do more and more of. Um, they're taking value that might exist in across multiple cards and turning it into value on one into one uh, general account. And I think that it's the companies that reward that flexibility and immediacy that the consumer is looking for that are going to win in the long run. Uh, we need to be looking for ways to, again, make it easier for the consumer, not harder. Right, so the irony here is that you're borrowing brand equity from a brand you don't have a relationship from to deepen the brand value that you do have a relationship from with the customer. Yeah. Uh, that's an unusual way to think about it yeah. when you're considering that the heritage was a gift card. You know, one of the things is, have you seen where a certain amount of value triggers in a new level of behavior? Is there a price point here at $50, $75, $100? People start behaving differently? You know, um, a trial is something that everybody's looking for. So how do I acquire more efficiently and effectively customers, new customers? And it's usually in relationship, it happens in relationship to the end value they're receiving. So it, if you're trying to engage an employee as an employer, it, it's going to be a different value than if you're trying to more deeply satisfy a customer with their reward points. So you um, see an employer actually saying to an, a workforce, look, we've got a program here. You can get gift cards to your favorite store. We're looking for a smoking cessation, or we're looking for yeah. something where we're looking for some kind of behavior change, or work out at, you know, do some kind of workout at the gym, or some kind of counseling. And guess what? This is, we've got an entire gift card program being more effective than just cash. It is more effective than cash because brands are more aspirational than cash. So we know that from research. You know, it's funny that you touched on healthcare because that's a segment that's relatively speaking unpenetrated by incentives, mm -hmm. but it is ripe for more, op for more. And I know you know some things about the healthcare space. We've had some dialogue about that. That's a space where we have a misalignment of incentives. Um, and the consumer doesn't always have the information or the transparency to do the right thing in terms of cost containment or choosing the right um, solutions. So that's a, that's a market space that I think has a lot of opportunity for payments to step in and be, help align interests of different parties. So I'm hearing you say it's an imagination challenge, all right? I'm hearing <laughs> you say, true. look, there's a new currency, which is branded value that you can layer on top of pretty much any payment system. It's not hard to do, and it comes with all of the equity of those brands, and it comes with all the motivational power of those brands. You know, the challenge is that a lot of the payment systems people are more in the engineering solution of payment systems, and the marketing tends to come later in the process. And what you're saying is, look, if you build the marketing into the ultimate payment system infrastructure, you can create something of way more benefit to the customer. Yeah, that's right. That's what you're saying. Yeah.
I think so. Well, okay, well, that sounds like a pretty good thing to have there. <laughs> I know that, you know, at Upside, we believe that, and when we chose, uh, you know, you specifically, we basically said, look, they're not only the largest, but they actually think like you're talking about. We are thinking exactly that yeah. way, too. The fact of the matter is, when you're buying business travel, most of the time you don't care about the cost. Your boss is paying for that. You just want comfort and convenience. But for some gift cards, you might change what you think right. about, especially if somebody shows you some simple choices. So, And I uh, think even beyond gift cards for the larger audience here who's thinking about fintech innovation, thinking about payments, thinking about financial services, it's how um, it's always stretching your brain to think further about how am I more deeply achieving the business objective, if that's engagement with a customer of some sort. Um, we're now, uh, you know, I've, I a couple people who write about payments I, I follow, and I hear this all the time, we're moving beyond the transaction. You know, we're moving, and I, I like to say we're moving closer to the point of influence rather than just the point of purchase. Yep. That's a very commerce-related way of saying it. But I, I really think there's truth to that statement. And there's many people who are showcasing new innovation here today that are facilitating that in different ways. You know, I think the branded value solution we're, we're, we talk about um, is only one way to do that. But I see it happening across the payment ecosystem, which is exciting. And you, th you also think about the potential for spend out there, $185 billion on advertising that nobody really knows whether it works. Well, let's turn it into something that we do know has an ROI, and let's turn it into something that can be customized and can truly satisfy the consumer and give them a richer experience. Um, I, it's a no-brainer. Thank you, Talbot. Okay. Our time's up, but I look forward to talking with you more about All it. All right. Thanks, <laughs> okay. Jay.